Good afternoon, traders, and welcome to another edition of AwesomeCallsTrading.com. I'm AJ. Um, well, we ended the month. This is August 30th, 2019. And typically, I like to use smaller, um, smaller, uh, what do you call it, uh, small cap stocks. As kind of like I like to start like those are sometimes my number ones because I got a lot of short sellers in here that like those five dollar and under stocks and so today um, I, I I just could not pass up Ulta um, I got up at three thirty four o'clock this morning and unlike a lot of you out there that don't study and um, outside our room that just you you know studying is everything and today. Um, I made the decision that, and, and I have to be honest, I probably was the only chat room in the world, honestly, and the only one that had the balls to say that Ulta was going to collapse to 240 today. Um, it was it was written in stone. I was adamant about it. 240 was going to be the area. Um, and there was all, but, you know, it's, it's the homework that went involved in it. Now, you could read the report all you want. You can go through the numbers. You can decipher it however you want, just like an analyst. But for me, um, I went further. And a lot of you are in chat rooms that don't play analyst calls. You don't even look at analysts, and it's unfortunate because you're not. You're just. You're just a one-dimensional trader. You know, you're trading in between lines, and that's all you're being taught. Or you're being taught to just a penny stock play, and if there's nothing in play, then you got to go back to bed. Um, but there's such a such a vast knowledge out there of what you can learn from just looking at analysts. And you know, for 16 years, I've buried myself in studying these people, what analysts to look for, what analysts to, to respect, which ones to how they read reports, how they gauge a stock. Um, and today, the report didn't tell me the stock was going to go to 240. The analysts did. And without getting into too much of the secret sauce that I do for my own members in here, um, I'll just kind of give you a brief of what was up this morning at 8.30. I want you to look, and again, to you that are watching, a lot of this is just like you don't understand it. And I get it because you're not, you're, you're not, you don't have the ability to get trained. You're not being trained properly. Analysts are not an important part of what you do. Nobody gives a shit in your chat room. In here, it's it's it. I I instill it. When somebody puts up a uh, an upgrade or downgrade, I'm all over it. You know, like uh, well, you know, we don't we don't put an HC Wainwright upgrade. You know, we don't run and go Tesla uh, or Tesla upgrade a stock with Concord. I mean, I see people all day putting that stuff on Twitter, and you're like, I just kind of laugh. Like you really don't have a clue who that person is, do you? But in here, to, in order to call and make a call like Ulta to, two, to 240, and I'll show you the pre-market notes. It's right here, Ulta. It missed, but if you look how I wrote it, I wrote multiple downgrades and Wells being the lowest, and the average is 250. Now, that took me a while to read and understand each one as I went through. Based on those analyst calls, the only way we were going to go long the only way, now I went long in pre-market because I was comfortable with this 250 range. And so I, I got it this morning and I missed the 250. The great Mike Purdue nailed it at 248. I mean, he just, 249 long. I mean, that was just, oh, I was so jealous. But I walked in, as soon as I woke up and started seeing it, I got 251.75 and I sold it at $254. I got two and a quarter points, and and then I was done with it. And then the way I wrote up this particular trade was, you cannot long Ulta unless it hits, and I believe I was clear on the specific amount. The stock must hit 256. You cannot long it. In other words, I didn't want anyone longing the open. If it did not push and the lower low set in, it would immediately go towards 240. Do you know how crazy it was this morning? Brandy did a, a, a live webinar or a recap for two minutes. I don't know if you saw it, but 
Randy, Randy Joe is an option trader. Okay. Like full on. That's all she'll trade. Options, options, options. And she's in here. She's been in here for years. But she could not find 240 puts. She was, if you watch what she's saying, she's like, there's nothing here. This man is calling a stock that you can't even get puts on. That's what I'm talking about. Nobody had 240 on their radar. There's no company, no, you know, no hedge fund. There's no chat room. There's nobody that had 240. And anybody that says they did were fucking copying from us straight up. And that to me is bullshit. But for us, we were privy to where what it was going to do, and we banked. We were just, it was just a collection of paychecks. We went in, and we just started taking pieces and pieces until it hit 240, okay? And what made the trade so great and the accuracy so perfect for this room was the cultivation of 16 years of really studying and doing homework. And how did I determine that price as as uh, as AJ Trader? I studied. Again, for a lot of you, this would take you hours. For me, it took me minutes, and I went through each and every one. I just read, 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 one by one. I mean, Citibank had three hundred. Citibank had three hundred, and I'm still calling 240 sell-off it's unheard of what was witnessed this morning and this will always make us the supreme leader <laughs> in chat rooms i mean you can't troll a room like this you can't say anything negative about a room like this and it's hard to leave a room like this once you're in here it's becoming addictive because you want to nail the next one and you know what this was such a great play but it wasn't even our best play today. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't. But it played perfect for us. I mean, I want you to see it. Ding, 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 ding. Here, you see how the lower low set in? There's the lower low. There's set in. Bam. Collapsed. 240. Now, I want you to look when Brandy was making her webinar. There's the 240. I missed it by 70 cents, and then it popped a solid eight, almost seven points. And as you can see, now it's grinding around that 240 range. You see that? The analyst, all 100 of them combined, told me after I read their reports how I'm going to trade the stock today. Okay? And as you can see, it was just perfection. We were done with this trade. We bounced it here, and it actually bounced off the 240 uh, two or three times. And now you can see, I'm a buyer at 235 with room to 230. At some point, new investors will come in and they will buy. And I wouldn't be surprised if Alta announces a buyback on it as well. The other thing that I liked uh, today, which was amazing that a lot of you never even heard of, uh, besides Alta, Alta. Hold on one second. It was a stock called, and none of you heard this before. It was stock was called M, I mean, COO. Now, COO is the Cooper, all right? I've never traded Cooper, all right? Never in my whole life. Didn't even know what it was. But because I'm a professional day trader, I, I didn't need to know. I just needed to see this $24 gap down, and I was all over it. That's all it took for me. And so I read the report, and the report told me, based on what I read, that the stock was down too much. Again, 16 years of day trading. I'm not some newbie that's been doing less than five years, and I'm thinking I know everything and trying to teach you. Okay, no, 16 years. I studied the earnings report and I made the call. And the decision was that the stock would actually pull at the open to 295. When it hits 295, be a buyer. Okay, remember I said that. Now look what I wrote, right? COO. 
right here. This was written at least 30 minutes before the opening bell in front of hundreds and hundreds of day traders. If the stock pulls at the open to 295, long the stock, the stock will go back to 309. Are you ready? If the stock pulls to 295 at the open, the stock will go to 309. You ready? And I traded this. I didn't just call it. I traded it. Ding, 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 ding. Bam. 295. And I missed it by 25 cents. I made it clear it would go to 309. Bam. 309. This is trading. I mean, to make 14 points, I mean, hello. And you know what was interesting? There was no market makers even on the stock this morning. Look, they just held it here. And I had to decide from this, this dot, this dot right here. See that dot? That 100 share dot? I had to decide at that moment, look at the time frame how the stock would play out on that dot just one little line i made the decision there were no analysts nobody was commenting nothing i had to be the analyst on this stock okay for the cooper companies and that's what i did and my decision as an analyst a tier one aj trader seven awesome calls act as a tier one analyst right this stock would probably pull to 295 and then ramp right back up to 309. And that's what it did. Okay. Beautiful play there. The other one that we did today was big. Now, again, unfortunately, you're in a chat room that will not and will never play earnings. You know, it's just not what they do. They don't see, they don't find any fun because they don't understand earnings. Earnings is a, such a complex way to trade. But you have to understand, all these companies report these thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of companies on the, on the stock exchange, they report every quarter. How could you not trade them when they report? If they're gapping up five or six points, don't you want to trade that with volume, with serious size where you could just gut it or pop it? Well, big is one of those. I've been trading big for years, many, many years, at least the past seven years. In order for you to trade big, you have to understand the stock. I don't need analysts to talk to me. I already know they beat. I just read the report. The report told me how to react to the stock. And this is what I go over in my secret sauce meetings with the traders in the chat room when they're here between 11.15 and 12 o'clock, Monday through Thursday. Now, for me, big was a simple, easy short. It was our number, I believe, our number five pick. All right. I want to pop at the open to 26, close to it. Once it gets there, I want to sell off the stock to 22.50 and under. That is the target. The stock is going to go there. There's no question. You don't know that. And you might argue and fight it and say that's bullshit. And, oh, my friend said this and Twitter said that. And, Stock tweet says this, and, and and I was reading a Yahoo report that said this. I mean, you're so you know you're out, you're in left field, AJ. There's no way that's going to 2250. Well, it is, and that's that's how you have to play big. It doesn't matter how much it pops at the open. I've determined the price where it's going to come down. I gave it a 50 cent valuation above where it closed. That was the decision I made. You didn't make it. I don't need your opinion, and I really don't give a shit what you think. Because at the end of the day, you're paying me to tell it so you could see what I think. And my decision is this stock is going to come down from $26 to $22.50. And then you're out. Now, you might have to wait a little bit of time, but you're going to get that $22.50. Are you ready? Ding, 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 ding. Here's the opening bell. Slam it. Almost hit the 26 spot, which is what I wanted. And then here's the sell-off. And guess what it's trading right now, this second, during this webinar? 2250. What does that mean for you as a day trader? That means you can come in with confidence in size, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 
4,000, 200, 300, 500, 50, 80, 100, 130 shares. And just wait for it. The stock is going to come down to 2250. The next trade we did was Tesla. Now, I really want you to understand the headline on Tesla. All right. Here's Tesla. Now, this morning, as far as Tesla was concerned, I want you to look at the headline. And I'm going to just kind of teach you what I teach in Secret Sauce. All right, here's the headline. Are you ready? This morning we wake up. It's the 30th of the month. Um, it says right here. Here's the headline. Tesla to be exempt from China's auto purchase 10% tax. And you're gapping up 10, 11, 12 points for that. Okay, let me read it again. Tesla to be exempt from China's purchase tax. Okay, so what do you see wrong in that headline? What do you see? I see I see a $225 stock. That's what I see. What do you see? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. My friend said it's going to go to 400 now because of that. Okay, well, that's – okay, obviously, they're not day traders. I'm a day trader, okay? I'm looking at a gap up. And I'm staring at this going, what the fuck is that? Uh, did Tesla come out with new numbers? Uh, did Tesla build more cars? Did Tesla's financials come out astounding? Did Tesla get a chatter, a buyout offer? Did Tesla get an infusion of cash? Did Tesla hire anybody? What the fuck did Tesla do? They didn't do anything. So why are you up? So walk into awesome calls, buy 225 puts, and go back to bed. When they clear, make your $10,000. I mean, how simple is that? I was adamant this was a $225 stock. I'll give you a little value, which I did because, again, ACT is a tier one analyst. So ACT made the decision the stock is worth about $225. It's worth 2 or $3 value to that news. Outside of that, it's a short to 225. If you want to see it, look what I wrote. Tesla. Number two pick in the chat room. Gapping up 12. This is nothing more than fluff. Doesn't mean the company's going to issue more cars or B or top line B. It's simple fluff. Short at 232, take it down to 225 and under. The more it pops, the more it will fade. 225 and under. Stock is sitting at 224.75. There's no words to describe what we're doing here. You just have to witness it for yourself and be a part of it. I want to give you another one. You ever heard of Dell? Look up at your screen. 90% of people out there have Dell computers, Dell monitors, Dell everything. Dell, 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 Dell. But Dell likes to sell off a lot of their, their gains, okay? Um, and so with Dell, I had anticipated the stock to make a rush out of the gate. And with that rush, I was going to get a nice sell-off to it. And I was looking for, I believe, I wanted Dell to pop at the open. Let me tell it right here. I went down here. Dell, 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 Dell. Dell. Um, I wanted Dell to go to 53 at the open and then a slow fader towards 48. I did want 48 and under. I felt it was up a little bit too much after reading the report. But as soon as 53 came, I wanted traders to get in there and start scaling in short. I thought they had a great opportunity. The longs that didn't want to short the stock, I just told them to just go long and hit 52, 53, and then you could sell it. So they were long out of the gate, the longs, and they ran it from 51, and they got their 53. And then the short sellers that I have in the room came in at 53 and took it all the way down to $49.60. Um, it did not hit my 48 target, which is right here or right around here. I still feel confident that over the few days it will. But um, in spite of the impressive uh, report that Dell put out, I still feel that it'll make a nice move So to the downside. Um, the other one, which kind of um, 
was just a fun stock to play today was AOBC. Now, AOBC had a disastrous quarter. I mean, and the reason for that is because um, now I want you to, I want you to, do you even know what AOBC is? Does anyone in, in, in awesome calls, we all know what it is, but do you know outside? You've never heard of it. You're just like, what is that? I've never heard of that. Okay, that's American Outdoors. <laughs> One of their major purchases is guns, you know, firearms. And with all the unnecessary violence in our world, guns are not the most popular thing to be buying, you know, in especially stores like that. And so their gun sales are, have dropped dramatically. And, um, and for that, the stock got really, I mean, if you look at their guidance, it was horrific. I mean, they came out with, you know, Q3 upcoming guidance 2020, and it was just, it's just done. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if Christmas is going to sa save these people. So for us as a trade, it was a great trade. It was a great setup. I had this on the radar. Normally, this would be our number one pick, but I couldn't pass up 15, 20 points on Ulta, and I couldn't pass up 15, 20 points on Tesla. And I couldn't pass up on those two at all. I had to deliver to the traders in the room. But I don't. Not everyone can trade with a big stock like that. So I had to come up with a really nice stock, uh, something cheap, something you can go in with size, make a thousand shares, six thousand buying power, and just get paid. And AOBC was that perfect one. Now this was gapping down. I want you to look how it traded after hours. You see this gap down? It pulled all the way to six. You see the double bottom? Secret sauce time. That's where the bottom should be. Okay. So for me, it was simple. And I want you to see how I wrote it up. A lot of you don't realize that when it trades, when the earnings come out, it actually kind of dictates how the next day is going to trade. But because a lot of you are, are newbies and you don't know enough, these are things you're taught in this room. Okay, So as you're listening to this video, you're like watching like, wow, that's interesting how it pulled there and then it pulled again the next day. Exactly. And so watch how the notes were written. But you have to read the report. It all has to come together. Again, I'm not looking at analysts to tell me what the stock is worth. I am the analyst. I've already made the decision. So how do you play it? Simple. It's our number three pick. This is gapping down 40. I'd long the stock. That's what I just said. I would long the stock at $7 to $7.20. All right. If this pulls at the open, all right, six and a quarter and under. So I'm giving you a choice. You can long the stock if you want to, but if you're going to wait, wait for the pull at open to six and a quarter. When the six and a quarter pulls, you can go all the way back up to about a point. So all you have to do is wait. All right? So I wanted to either a quick short covering at the open or a snap at the open. And then I wanted to I wanted to top it off. And then I want to be an all day later back to pre-market lows. So look how we want. If this pulls at the open to six and a quarter, the stock will go to seven and a quarter. It will top off and then it will be an all day day fader back to lows you see that i scripted the entire trade all you had to do as a day trader was wait for it ripster uh, uh who was it uh mr purdue many traders just like they waited they're just like okay i mean the man's telling me to wait so ding 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 the bell opens and look where it hits you ready bam see where yesterday hit Come across six and a quarter. Bam. Slam it. Almost hit seven. Hit six ninety five. So I didn't get the seven and a quarter. Nobody gives a shit. You made your money. Now, what did I say from there? All day fader. All day fader. You see how it's scripted and you see how it found a base of six? This is next level shit. This is beyond day trading. You're actually becoming a market maker where the stock's gonna go and how to trade it out. That's how good you're going to be in here. That's how great we are. And we do this every single day on 12 different ideas. This is all we do. All right. Let me give you another one. Uh, well, I have a few more. Uh, VM, now, this was an interesting stock. I, I did, it did go up a little bit more than I anticipated. Uh, but traders did make money on it. Uh, and I'm going to show it to you. Now, a lot of you aren't aware, but when you have VMW, um, when you have Dell, all right, running on earnings, 
BMW is is going to run with it. All right, those two are together. All right. Now BMW had no earnings, it had nothing to do with, but Dell is a big part of BMW. All right, it's huge. So when you get a parabolic move on Dell to 53, you're immediately going to have a parabolic move on BMW. All right. My job was to tell you to long the stock at the open and where the stock was going to go. I anticipate the stock would run to $141 at the open. And then we could slowly get in there and fade it and take it back down on the stock. So if you look at my call here, um, I want the stock to pop to 131 to 141 and then top it off and then come back down to 136.50. Well, that little $2 difference, <laughs> it was the $2 difference in the stock because I want you to look. The stock actually ran to $143. And one of my friends, Steve B, I needed a trade because um, Campbell Soups wasn't coming down quick enough. So I nailed, I got him on this one on a short at 141 where I told him to take it. And the stock came all the way down to $138. It was a great play. Really great play. So one thing I do in here is when a trader didn't do well he's, or he's frustrated a little bit because the trade didn't work, I'm always trying to find him the next trade so they can, they can feel better about themselves. And, and because uh, sometimes I mean, let me show you the Campbell the Campbell soup uh, trade. It, it was it's going to do what I said it would do. The problem is it just took a little bit longer. You know, sometimes it is Campbell's a really thick stock, and it doesn't move like a like a COO or a Netflix or a Nvidia or a Tesla. It just it has its own it it's 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 its own snail. All right, it's like the tortoise and the hare, and you know <laughs> the tortoise is just going to take its time. But Campbell had really great earnings, great profits, great return, great guidance. They, they hit on all cylinders. However, um, I did have Campbell to come down. So Campbell Seuss was gapping up two and a half. Um, I like to get a push at the open of 47.50 and then a slow fade towards 44, 44.50. That's what I was looking for. And um, because we're so used to making money so quick, sometimes stocks, they, you know, they don't move fast enough for us. Uh, we get a little, we want it fast, okay? Anyway, here's the initial play. There's the 47, and then it pulled. So it was doing exactly what I thought, and then it curled around and broke through the flag, and then hit 47.50, and then ran just a little bit more. But as you can see clearly, the stock is coming down just nicely. So that's the art of scaling in. So that way you don't get shaken out. You know, if you take it in at 47.50, close to 48, you have 250 shares, you got 250 more, it starts to break, and you let it fade. And you have to understand these are an all-day fader, so it's going to take all day for the profit takers to come in. And you'll see this stock at $44 on Monday. I mean, it's, it's, it's a slam dunk. It's no-brainer um, on that one. Okay? And so that is Campbell Soup. Campbell, Campbell, Campbell Soup. We all know what Campbell Soup is because we're on the store, right? And uh, just remember, when you have, Dale has earnings, BMW is going to react to Dale. And a lot of people don't know that. I know that. That's why it was on our list. Hey, it was a wonderful day. It's 12 o'clock. It's Friday. It's beautiful. It was a wonderful day to day trade today. It was exciting. I think I ended the month perfect. I was green myself today. I traded four stocks live in front of everyone. I didn't just call them. I traded ALXN, COO, Netflix, and Ulta. Those were my babies today. And, um, I had a lot of fun. It was it was so much fun watching traders make money in this chat room, and uh, I choose not to hold anything over the weekend. I took the I'm taking the wisdom of the great Dark Side, uh, one of our great leaders in our room. Uh, he's got a really good feel in the market as well. He has made a choice. Um, who's they? <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold, I'm just not going to buy anything. I don't care if the market flushes out. Um, I'd rather come back Tuesday fresh, ready to go, hit with a top short idea for someone, and just come in here and just kill it. I mean, we're all going to start, our books are all going to be uh, blank come uh, Monday. Um, but I do, I do want to give a shout out to a very special day trader who's been part of our room for the last six months. Um, I don't know if you're following him, but we certainly are. I want to give a, a shout out to Noel Zoom Zoom. I think he's over thirty or thirty-five thousand dollars for the month, and today he added another three days 
uh, 3000 to his income. He is a phenomenal, just inspiring. He's an animal. He loves our room. I mean, he's tried different things out, but you know, he can always come back knowing that when you're in awesome calls, you're going to get one of those awesome call plays and you're just going to make so much money. And he did not look back on Ulta. $1,735 on Ulta alone. I'm telling you, traders, what you outside of this room when i when i started to look around what people were trading i had some people say there's nothing to trade today i saw some people go oh spy we're trading spy 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 and it was just like ulta how could you not trade ulta today i even warned you it was going to be our number one pick and let me tell you something and guess what i got today the chat room rewarded me with a hundred percent rating that means everything I gave was on point. And uh, that means a lot to me to end the end of the month that way. So thank you. All right. I want you to enjoy your weekend. No overnights for me. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Be well. Thank you all. Let's give a shout out to all the moderators in the great, great chat room. You know, we were phenomenal. You all were phenomenal. And we have, I want to say thank you to Jenny, Darkside, Raphael. Dave the Trader, Adam News, Fire, Love, B Trades, Dark Side, you were phenomenal. Palmer, great leadership, James and JT. And I want to do a I want to do a special prayer this weekend for all those in their in uh, in the hurricane area in Florida where the hurricane's gonna go. I will we'll pray for you. I hope you are safe. Um, you know, I'm sorry this is coming, you know. Uh, we don't get a lot of a lot of uh, hurricanes here in California. We get earthquakes. Uh, but um, nonetheless, I will be saying a special prayer. All right. So I want to say thank you. I love you all. I appreciate we grew again this month. Uh, we're growing every month. We had a decent month. And I look forward to September just really kicking ass and just going to a different level. And uh, I just I love what we're doing in here. And thank you so much. And uh, I will see you on Tuesday. I'll tweet my normal today. And then tomorrow, I'll try to do charts. And then Sunday, I'll probably take a day off on Sunday. And then Monday, um, get you set up. Uh, so don't expect a lot of tweets on Sunday. But be safe. Be out there. And I'm going to be with my son and uh, on Sunday. And uh, thank you so much. I can't say enough about today. It was fucking great. It was great. What a way to end of the month. All right. Take care. God bless. Be well. And I'll see you.